Welcome to the 2021 PyTorch Annual Hack. My name is Tao. I'm a software engineer on PyTorch mobile team. In this video, I'll be talking about how to use PyTorch on iOS, some of the improvements we made last year and this year. Finally, I'll be showing you a demo of how to use PyTorch to build an image classification app. The PyTorch iOS runtime is a C++ static library that can be installed using CocoaPath. We provide an end-to-end -end workflow that allows you to further optimize your model to get most of the performance out of the device. I'll be walking through how to use Python APIs in the diagram in the following demo. Before we dive into the demo, I'd like to quickly introduce some of the new features we released in 1.9, which includes the mobile interpreter, the metal backend, custom builds, and torch vision ops. We'll be covering most of these features in the demo. If you want to learn more, please refer to our in-depth tutorials and the demo apps. In this demo, we'll be building an image classification app using a pre-trained mobile nav v2 model from Torch Vision. To follow along, you need ice code version 12 or higher on macOS. You need to have CocoaPass installed on your machine. And if you want to deploy it to the device, you need an Apple developer account in an iOS device running at least iOS 12. You should also be using PyTorch 1.9 or higher. In particular, I'll show you how to set up the project to include PyTorch iOS runtime, how to export your model to Torch with the optimized PyTorch model format, how to further optimize your model to, for better performance, how to call the model from your code, how to run your model on iOS GPU. And finally, I'll be showing you how to use the custom build to reduce the size of your app. Let's dive in. So first thing first, let's install PyTorch on your machine. To do that, I'm going to create a new Kunda environment. You also need to install NumPy. Now let's install PyTorch. Cool, now PyTorch has been successfully installed. Next, in this Python script, I'll be showing you how to set up and optimize your model for PyTorch Mobile. The model we are going to use is a pre-trained mobile nav v2 from Torch Vision. To run this model on device, we need to convert it to a Torch script format. Note, I call model.evolve here to turn off things in the model you don't want during the inference time. Training only layers like dropout and autograph are now supported on mobile. Next. We use PyTorch Mobile Optimizer to further optimize the model. This Optimize for Mobile API runs a list of uh, optimization passes on the graph, such as drop or removal, come radio fusion, and other optimizations. To learn more about this function, please refer to our tutorial linked at the end of the presentation. Finally, let's save the model to disk. The underscore save for light interpreter is a new API we introduced in 1.9. A 6 R Torch script model in a light interpreter compatible format. Now let's run the script. Cool. Now we have our model prepared. Let's go back to Xcode. In this Xcode project, we are going to use our model to build an image classifier. Let's quickly run the code and see what the app looks like. As you can see, we are trying to predict the category of this image. So how can we do that using PyTorch? Let's start off by uh, installing the CocoaPath LibTorch library. First, we need to add LibTorch Lite to our pod file and then run pod install. Now 
Now we are going to close the project file and uh, open up the uh, workspace file. Now, how do we call PyTorch from our code? Since the LibTorch library is implemented in C++, Swift cannot interact with it directly. So we need to create an Object-C wrapper as a bridge. I'm going to copy the wrapper files from the resource folder. You can find the link to all resources in our demo app on GitHub. Icecode is going to ask me to creating this bridging header and uh, we just click yes. In this bridging header, we are going to import torch module.h. So you can see in the header, there are only two methods that are really interesting. One which initialize the PyTorch runtime with the model pass as a parameter and the second one does the actual prediction when you pass in the pointer of an image buffer. And uh, here we are using the load for mobile to load our model. This is our new mobile interpreter API introduced in 1.9. And we should always use this API to load models that were saved for light interpreter. Okay, now let's go back to the view controller. Uh, let's first load our model. Next, I'm going to load labels from a text file which contains 1,000 categories that the model recognizes. Again, you can find these files in the demo apps on GitHub. Now we are ready to add the inference code. Since we don't want to block the main thread, we will dispatch the inference to the background thread. So the first step is to resize the input image to 224 by 224 and uh, normalize it. This normalization method is a, a category method on UI image. And uh, next, we take the image buffer and uh, uh, pass it to module.predict. After that, we retrieve the label from the predicted category and uh, uh, display the top three results in text view. Now let's run the app. Cool, there we are. The model thinks the wolf is a wolf. In this part of the video, I'm going to show you how to run your model on iOS GPU. Let's first install the PyTorch Netly builds. Now let's make some changes to our Python script. As you can see here, I added a second parameter to the optimize for mobile function. And uh, uh, metal is the name of our iOS GPU backend. And I also gave our a model with the new name. Now let's run the script again. Now we have our GPU model converted. We need to update our CocoaPods to use the Netly build as well. Let's add a new path target to our path file. But before we do pod install, we need to remove the existing CocoaPods information from our project. Then we can do pod update. Now let's open up the Xcode project. The first thing we need to do is to make some changes to our Object-C wrapper. To run the model on GPU, we need to call down metal to move the input tensor from CPU to GPU and call down CPU to move the output tensor back from GPU to CPU. Now let's go back to the view controller to load our model.
Now let's run the app. Cool, we got the same result from our GPU model. In the last part of the tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use custom build to reduce the size of your app. By default, the libtorch library contains all PyTorch operators, but your model may only need a few of them. So it would be great if you can have a library that only contains the operators we want. So how can we do that? Instead of using the static library from CocoaPass, this time we are going to build custom libraries from PyTorch source code. But before we jump into the detail, we need to figure out how to get the operators we want from the model. Let's go back to our Python script. As you can see here, I dumped the root operators from the Tor screen model and saved them to a YAML file. Let's run the script. Now we have this YAML file generated. Let's use it to build our custom library. Here I have a PyTorch repository checkout from GitHub. Make sure you are in the root directory and run the build command on the screen. Since you are building everything from source, this building process could take a while to finish. Now let's copy the library files and header files to our project folder. Before we open the S code, we need to remove the CocoaPods information from the project file. We can do that using pod deintegrate. Cool, now let's open the Xcode. The first thing we need to do is to add our custom libraries and headers to the project. Next, I'm going to do a few configurations to set up Xcode to make sure our libraries can be loaded properly. All these steps have been documented in our iOS tutorial. The last step is to make some changes to our Object wrapper. Here, we need to manually include the headers we need. Now let's run the app. As you can see, we got the same results. The custom library works. However, this time the binary size is much smaller. You can check out the number by clicking the binary inside the .app file. We have lots of resources if you are interested in learning more. An IELTS tutorial, a mobile optimizer tutorial, a mobile interpreter tutorial, and all our IELTS demo apps. I've linked all resources mentioned in the tutorial in the comment section of the video. Thank you for watching our video today. We hope it was helpful. Good luck on the hackathon.